Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage. So tonight we are actually not working on the race truck. So if you guys saw the last episode, and if you haven't, please check it out. We finished up our removable steering column or our removable steering wheel with our new steering column in the front of the truck. Um, this setup right here, that's all done. We also cleared off the back end of the truck. So the truck back here is pretty much a fresh canvas. Um, you might be wondering, what possibly could you have removed all that stuff for? Not that there's a whole heck of a lot back here, but kind of, what are we up to? So that's the point of this video, is just kind of going over what it is we're gonna be doing and kind of going over our parts, unboxing everything, checking everything out, laying it out, and talking about what we're doing and why we're doing it. So the two boxes in question are right over here. We have one box from Competition Engineering and one box from Firepunk. Um, the comp Competition Engineering box actually came from Firepunk as well, but this is all stuff from Firepunk. So we'll get into what we're doing and why we're doing it, but let's get this stuff unboxed and talk about what we got. So guys, we have everything unboxed. We have the fire pump box, we have the competition engineering box. And what this is, this is a four link setup. So guys, we are four linking the truck. Now you know, that's kind of our big project for this winter. Um, it hopefully isn't that big a deal. Um, we're gonna have to do a lot of measuring, a lot of double checking, triple checking, all that kind of stuff. But that's kind of our big uh, project right now on the truck. Um, is to remove these leaf springs. So as you guys can see here, we've been running the traditional leaf spring. We had a ladder bar set up on the truck. Um, my original plan was to go to a mono leaf, just this one leaf spring and uh, a cow track set up, use the Calvert Racing uh, traction bars on our leaf spring and then add a coil over shock. So I was, really like dead set on doing that um, eliminate a lot of this weight and just go to something very simple well when we were at pri bob and i ran into the guys from firepunk um lynn levon uh, a couple of the other guys but got to talking to them and asking them questions one thing about the guys from firepunk i talked to them at ucc before they are a wealth of knowledge and they are more than happy to share with you what they found, what they think, that kind of stuff. They're a great resource. Um, if you guys are at an event, don't feel shy, go approach them. They're, they're so approachable. I mean, they're just normal guys like you and me. So anyhow, I got talking to them and I was telling them what I wanted to do with the truck. I said, here's what I'm planning. And they said, you should just four link it. With what you're doing with the truck, um, the level of the build, you're gonna wanna have more control over it and four link it. Um, the, the mono leaf and the coilovers with the Calvert racing, um, you know, the Caltrax traction bars, that can work. Uh, the industrial truck, industrial injection race truck, they had a similar setup to that. If not that setup, I think it, I think it pretty much was that what the setup I was planning on running. Um, and they ran like a low eight. I mean, they were on that cusp of that 799, which is the limit for these cage certifications. But after talking to them and realizing what time we had available, I decided to just purchase their kit and that way we'll have complete control over the rear end. So what we have here, we have our four um, link bars, if you will, that's what makes it a four link, and um, our pan hard bar. I think that's what they call it, pan hard bar. So anyway, these four bars here will locate the axle using these brackets. We have these brackets that will go on our axle. Let's cut them in half. There's four of these, and then four associated brackets that will get welded up further on the frame. Also, we have our um, shock mounts here. So they are 
plenty adjustable. We also have tabs to mount um, for a bar for shocks, which we will have to install. And then this also for our Panhard bar. I think that's what it's called. I can't remember, but basically between these brackets and this bar, that will locate the axle. So with the four link, there's nothing really holding this axle, you know, to stay true to the frame of the truck and the truck itself like we do with our leaf springs, you know, just having a mount here, mount there. So that bar will keep this thing from going side to side um, and really, you know, putting stress on the four link bars this way. So that's kind of, you know, that kind of goes on the axle that'll come up and go over to the frame. Um, if you guys want to do this to your truck, obviously watch my videos because we'll be going through it and I'll be showing you everything I've learned, but also check out Firepunk Diesel's um, YouTube channel. They have a very good video explaining kind of how they set up the four link and all of that. So with these brackets and all, we have many adjustable points for our bars. And really what the four link does is it allows you to basically change where the axle is applying force to the frame of the truck. Um, it can allow the truck to squat, allow the truck to lift, allow the truck to just kind of take off smooth you know, or straight, I should say. It all depends how you set it up. Um, that's way more technical than we're gonna get into. I'm still learning about it myself, but depending on whether you're on a radial, whether you're on a true slick, all those settings can be changed, adjusted. If you need to add rear steer to it, you can. Um, like if the truck were to start leaving, and it would always leave, say, to the right, we could add some rear steer to rear axle, so we don't do that. Like I said, it's, very adjustable so we can dial this thing in for what exactly we need. Now, as far as shocks slash coilovers go, or just coilovers, I guess. I don't know why I said slash. But anyway, as far as coilovers go, we're not going to get those right away. What we'll do is we'll just kind of put a bar back there for now um, to support the rear end of the truck. Basically, we need to have the truck fully together so we can get our shocks or our coilovers ordered to match what the weight of the truck is, what the weight bias of the truck is. So also we're gonna to need to set a four point scale so we can scale the truck, see where our weight is. Obviously we know most of it is up front, but we kind of want to know like exactly where everything is so we can call the people up um, about coilovers. And I talked to a lot of these people at PRI and I think I know who I'm gonna go with, but not 100% yet. But we'll call them up, say, here's what we got, and they will build us a cool over to match, you know, with the correct valving, the correct springs, and all that kind of stuff. So that coil over will be mounted on this bracket and these tabs. That's kind of the overview of the fire pump kit. Uh, we actually have to call them because unfortunately, I feel as though we are missing some parts. Um, as you can see, I have all of the boxes and all of the packing materials out on the garage floor because we actually don't have our bolts for our four link bars in the kit. So I don't know, they must've gotten misplaced or whatever. We'll call them up. I'm sure they'll send them, it'll be no problem. That being said, getting to our competition engineering anti-roll bar kit is what this is. Um, so here is our instructions. Of course, our sweet sticker, which you gotta have. But I noticed we had two sets of these brackets for the bearings. So this anti-roll bar setup is another chassis component that will work with the four link. What the roll anti-roll bar, not the roll bar, the anti-roll bar will do is basically it comes out over the rear axle. There will be two um, bars going down to it and that helps you with the twist of the truck. So if you are, especially in a two wheel drive, if you guys see when they launch a vehicle, you know, it has a tendency to kind of do this and kind of lean to one side. What the anti-roll bar does is you can adjust it, preload one side or slack the other a little bit to stop that from happening and have more control over the vehicle. So the reason we went with this is simply we're doing all this to control what the truck's doing with all the power we plan on putting down. Might as well go the extra little effort and do the anti-roll bar kit. So basically, like I just said, you have this bar that goes between the frame rails. These brackets on these spline pieces 
they will stick out and be about level and then we will go down to our bar and that will connect to the rear axle to control it now i'm saying how we have two sets of these brackets well once again i think there was a little bit of uh we're missing some more parts let me just say it um we don't have our bearings so there is a bearing that gets bolted to this with these uh small carriage bolts so we can support our anti-roll bar and we don't have it so i guess when competition engineering boxed this thing up we got two of these sets of brackets which we don't need we only need one full set and I think they put those in there instead of the bearings by accident. So, like I said, I've gone through both boxes completely, made a complete mess here, um, trying to find those parts, and we just don't happen to have them. Not a big deal. We'll get that stuff. We'll get you know get in contact with those guys, get everything squared away, and that way we can you know proceed forward with this kit. Um, also with the fire pump. Um, four link kit it is notched out for inch and five eighths tube so it's actually nice we can use our chrome ollie from the cage when we replace this bar right here so that piece i thought oh, it'll probably go to scrap now we're going to be using it so not a big deal that we had to replace that bar we'll actually be using that stuff over <sighs> So guys, um, just a little unboxing video showing you guys the fire punk kit and the competition engineering um, anti-roll bar. So we're gonna be four linking the truck. Um, we're, if you didn't think we were, I was serious before, now you should know I'm serious. Um, pretty much we're doing everything other than back halfing the truck, which that will eventually probably happen, but that is, next winter's project or the winter after that or something like that but this is as close as you can get to having full control over the chassis without doing a complete back half um not that a uh, full back half gives you more control but it'll lighten things up in the rear um but yeah i'm excited it's going to be a lot of work we're going to have to double triple check our measurements get everything right but we will eliminate so much weight in the rear end here um which i know all our weights up front but it's still more weight off the vehicle these leaf springs i bet you those leaf springs alone are 100 pounds each when you add up all the bracketry and all that which we can cut off the truck um we got you know shock mounts to cut off the axles we just have a lot of work to do back here a lot of cutting and grinding um but it will be better in the end because we can get everything right we can get it adjustable <laughs> Then once we get into our racing and we get to where we are going to events and actually competing, we can dial the truck in and just get her perfect. So anyway, guys, like I said, a lot of talking, a um, little unboxing for you. I hope you guys are excited. I know I am. It's gonna be a lot of work, but we're gonna learn a lot as well along the way. Um, also, at, when we get done with all the four link, um, we'll go over exactly how everything works in you know a little more in depth this is just a little bit of a overview of what we're doing and why we're doing it so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed get out in your garage get the wrenching on your truck <laughs>